Welcome back to Biomechanics Lab. In the previous uh, week, we went over the two aspects of the shoulder. We went over the shoulder girdle, and then we went over the actual shoulder joint. And whenever we did those two chapters, we talked about when we're with those movements, we have no bending of the elbow. So if you imagine doing a bicep curl in the gym, we didn't do any motions like that. In other words, the angle of our elbow remained constant. Now we're going to go into chapter six, which is going to talk about the elbow and the radio ulnar joints. Okay, this should actually have an N right here. Let me go and fix that. So the elbow and radial ulnar joints. So there's two joints we're going to cover in this chapter. The majority of it is going to be the elbow, and then we're going to do a little bit with the radial ulnar at the very end and a little application. All right, so first let's go over some of the bones that we have. This is the actual elbow joint. This bone on the top, this is the humerus, and then down here we have the ulna, which if we are in anatomical position, the ulna is medial, and the radius is going to be the lateral bone. Okay, so if we're in anatomical position, arms by the side, palms facing forward, the radius is on the outside. Um, also important on the humerus, we have what's referred to as the lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle. And in this area, this is kind of where the ulna is going to attach on the medial side, and the radius is going to attach on the lateral side. Okay, and this joint itself is going to be the elbow joint. Okay, take a look at another view right here. This is the lateral view. Um, again, it's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can kind of make out in. Uh, anatomical position, radius is going to be on the lateral side, ulna is going to be more medial, and you can see the humerus right here, okay? And we'll kind of skip over this. All right, um, here's a look at the forearm, okay? So this is the actual elbow joint up here, but when we take a look at only the forearm, um, what we're going to see again in anatomical position, um, this is the anterior view, we have the ulna, is going to be medial, the radius is going to be lateral. All right, let's take a look at the forearm bones themselves. All right, so we have here, at least if we look at it in the anatomical position, ulna is going to be the medial bone, radius is going to be more lateral, okay? And also don't forget we have this uh, fibrous connective tissue that's between uh, the radius and ulna called the interosseous membrane. Um, if you remember, this is an amphiarthrosis. Okay, that was one of the joints that has very limited movement. It's not completely immovable, but it's also not diarthrotic, meaning it doesn't have free movement. It just has a little movement. Okay, so remember that from when we talked about some of the joints. All right, now to get into some of the nitty gritty stuff. All right, so we're looking at the, this is the upper arm, or we could say the proximal part of the arm. So when we're talking about movement of the elbow joint, we basically have two main movements, at least from this perspective. We've got flexion and we've got extension. Okay, Flexion is going to be facilitated mainly by flexor muscles. And the main ones we have are going to be the bicep brachii, which is going to have two heads. There's a long head and there's a short head. Then we also have another muscle that exclusively promotes flexion, and that's going to be the brachialis. As we'll see, the bicep is actually going to have some other functions other than flexion, even though that's mainly what we think of it as. And then extension, which is going to be increasing the angle of the joint. Extension is facilitated by extensors, and again, there's multiple components of the triceps brachii. We have a long head, and then we also have a lateral head. We also, additionally to those muscles, so we see triceps right here, bicep, at least the long head is right here in the brachialis. We also have some other muscles um, kind of in here that we're going to take a look at in a little more detail um, when we get to the table. Um, notice we also have a muscle called the brachioradialis. That has some uh, activity in terms of flexion. Um, we also have some muscles in the forearm that we're going to cover in a little bit more detail at the very end because some of these, such as the pronator teres, um, there's another one that's actually a little bit more distal um, called the pronator quadratus, and then we also have a supinator that are going to be involved in pronation and supination of the arm. That's actually what the radial ulnar joint does. Okay, so let's look at the first these two motions. These are pretty much the only real motions of the elbow joint itself. 
When we talk about pronation and supination down here, which we'll do last, those are going to be actions of the radial ulnar joint, which we have not talked about yet. But the elbow joint pretty much just has flexion and extension. So this is a fairly, a fairly straightforward joint. Um, we can see that flexion is where we decrease the angle of the joint. So if we're doing bicep curls, normal bicep curls with the dumbbells, um, whenever we curl up, that's going to be the flexion. And the muscle that's the agonist there, the main muscle is going to be the bicep brachii. But don't forget, we also have the brachialis doing that as well. Okay. Although normally when people are working out their doing that exercise, what they're really trying to have hypertrophy would be the bicep brachii. That's this muscle that's more anterior. But the brachialis also plays a huge role in flexion. And then extension, this would be more like tricep extensions, and you can really do that any way you want. There's machines for it, or you can also do it with dumbbells. This is where we have an increase in the angle of the elbow, and this is going to be facilitated by the triceps brachii. One thing I just want to point out before we go any further, generally for most people, the triceps muscles are overall actually stronger than the bicep muscles. A lot of people um, tend to like to work out their flexors, their biceps, and um, not to mention the brachialis. Um, in fact, if you actually have these muscles, the flexors quite a bit stronger than the extensors, you can, also, you can actually have a muscle imbalance that actually makes you more susceptible to injury, which is why it's a good idea to work out the flexors and the extensors. Okay. So let's take a look at this table that kind of goes into the various functions of the different muscles. And some of these are a little complicated, like the bicep brachii. It has a long head, a short head, and some of the functions do overlap a little bit, okay? So if we're looking at the long head, the long head has several functions. The one we're gonna focus on is it's gonna be involved in flexion at the elbow, okay? When we're looking at the bicep break eye short head, it's actually not going to be focused on flexion at the elbow. It's actually going to be more flexion of the shoulder joint. Um, it also has some activity in terms of abducting the shoulder joint, which is in a different plane, the frontal plane. So when you're talking about flexion of the elbow, so doing typical bicep curls, what you're actually hypertrophying is really mainly the long head of the bicep break eye. Okay? If we look at the brachialis, which is this muscle kind of right here, a little to the side of the bicep brachii, the brachialis is solely for flexion of the elbow. It doesn't really do anything else. Okay. Additionally, the brachioradialis is going to help with flexion of the elbow, although the contribution from the brachialis is much more significant. The brachioradialis does play a role. Additionally, the brachioradialis, and we're not going to really focus on this because there's other more important muscles, it can facilitate pronation and supination, okay, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Now let's take a look at the muscles on the posterior side of the arm. We looked at the anterior side, so we have the biceps, brachialis, brachioradialis, etc. These in general are going to promote flexion. If we're now talking about the posterior side, these are going to be mainly involved in extension. And really the main one, which has multiple parts, is going to be the triceps. Okay? You can see that the medial head really just promotes extension of the elbow joint. Lateral head, just extension of the elbow joint. The long head has a few other functions. Um, we get adduction of the shoulder joint. Um, horizontal adduction and just normal adduction of the shoulder joint. These are going to occur in different planes, but in general it's going to promote adduction. But also we see that it's going to be extension of the shoulder joint and extension of the elbow joint. So the triceps have to be pretty strong. And like I said, in general, for a, a normal um, person, the triceps are stronger than the biceps. Okay. Now, like I said, the the functions of the elbow joint are fairly straightforward. We pretty much just have flexion and we have extension. If we now go to the radial ulnar joint, we're going to have actually both pronation and supination. Okay, so we'll take a look at, and actually I have a slide down here. Okay, this is, this is actually a person's right arm. Okay, you can see this is anatomical position. The radius is lateral, ulna is medial as we would expect. 
So if you're in an anatomical position, you've got your palms facing forward, your hands are what we call supinated. Okay, supinated, the way to think about it is that um, Oliver Twist book by Charles Dickens, he said he holds his hands out with his palms facing up, please sir, I want some more soup. So that is supination with your hands, palms facing forward. And when you're in this position right here, um, what happens is, is your ulna and radius, in some, in some ways you could say they lie parallel to each other, okay? Now, when you pronate your hands, that means you take your hands with your palms facing up and you flip them over, kind of like if you had your hand with your palm facing the desk. So your hand is directly on the desk. The radius crosses on top of the ulna, okay, as you can see here. That is facilitated by two muscles. Okay, number one, one that is up more um, proximal to the elbow is the pronator teres, and then closer to the hand we have what's called the pronator quadratus. These two muscles are going to facilitate pronation. So when you pronate your hands, these two muscles facilitate the movement of the radius over the ulna, as you can see in the pronation. Now, if we wanted to do the reverse, if we wanted to start in the pronated um, position and then go to supinated, what we're going to have to contract, rather, is instead the supinator. So the pronator teres and quadratus will be relaxed, and we're going to have to contract the supinator. Okay? It turns out that the bicep brachii are actually going to play a role in that as well. It turns out that when you supinate your hand from a pronated position, the bicep brachii actually are going to have some degree of contraction, and that's going to also facilitate the supinator movement, which is going to cause supination of the hand. Okay, so I'm going to conclude this video here. So hopefully you have a good understanding of the elbow joint, that's flexion extension, radio ulnar joint is pronation and supination. I'm going to have one more very short video, very short video, um, that's going to have um, some applications of this in the gym. Um, there might be some things that when it comes particularly to bicep curls that you really haven't thought of that are actually going to involve the radio ulnar joint rather than the elbow joint explicitly. Thank you for watching this. Good luck next week.